Warriors. I hope your study prep is going well. My name's Christina. I'm a physical therapist licensed to practice in the state of Connecticut. And the purpose of this video today is for us to go over together a cardiopulmonary intervention practice question. So let's get started. First and foremost, with every question, you wanna make sure you read it more than once, you read it slowly, and you point out keywords. So let's just start with reading the question together. A PT is teaching a patient about the correct technique of performing diaphragmatic breathing. A student PT observing the therapist asks why this technique is being taught to the patient. Which of the following is least likely to be a reason for the PT to incorporate diaphragmatic breathing in the patient's exercise program? Now let's read the options. A, increased respiratory rate. B, anxiety. C, absence of pulmonary secretions. Or D, hypoxemia. So now that we've read it the first time through, we got a bunch of information. We're starting to think about what we could possibly apply to this question. So now let's go back and read it again. And this time, let's point out some clues that could help get us to the correct answer. A PT is teaching a patient about the correct technique of performing diaphragmatic breathing. That seems pretty important. A student PT observing the therapist asks, why is this technique being taught to the patient? Which of the following is least likely to be a reason for the PT to incorporate diaphragmatic breathing in the patient's exercise program? So let's ask ourselves now that we've read it a second time and we've pointed out some clues, what is the point of this question? Because there's always a reason. Why are they asking you this question? They're asking which of the following is least likely to be a reason for the PT to incorporate diaphragmatic breathing in the patient's exercise program. At the same time that they're asking you least, they're also asking you, why would you use this technique, right? So there's a bunch of different things you can ask yourself to help you get to the question or eliminate some things that you're not sure of. So let's ask ourselves, what do we know about this topic? What is diaphragmatic breathing? Let's start with that. A breathing technique that is controlled and can be done with or without manual facilitation that increases outward motion of the abdominal wall and reduces the upper rib cage motion during inspiration. So now let's ask ourselves, why is this used? Well, we know it's used for low oxygen in the blood, increased respiratory rate, atelectasis, anxiety, and people who have excessive pulmonary secretions. So now let's try to visualize what this is, right? Because this is a technique that you actually use and teach to people. So sometimes it's helped to visualize what it is. So what do we know about this technique? We know that we start in supine. We put the patient in a posterior pelvic tilt to make the position easier for them. We have the patient place their hands on their abdomen to increase the proprioceptive feedback while they're doing this technique. We want to see outward motion of the abdominal wall, and we don't want to see a lot of motion at the chest wall during inspiration. We can progress the positioning of the patient from supine to sitting to standing and performing while walking. If we're noticing that they're using accessory muscles, we can decrease that by using our hands as manual facilitation to tell them which muscles we don't want them to use during this technique. If we notice that they're struggling with this technique as described above, we know that we can have them sniff three times and then exhale slowly until they're able to perform the technique properly. So now let's go back to our options. We just asked ourselves all of these questions. We got all of this really great information. So now let's see if we can apply it to the options. A, increased respiratory rate. B, anxiety. C, absence of pulmonary secretions. D, hypoxemia. So let's say we didn't know all of the information we just went over on the previous slides. Let's see if we can create a relationship between these options. Let's start with anxiety. Most people know what anxiety either feels like or looks like. So let's, what do we know about anxiety? We know that when people are anxious, they increase their respiratory rate, which is what A is by definition. So B and A have a relationship together. We can also look at D, low oxygen in the blood. You're increasing your respiratory rate. You're taking a lot of rapid, short breaths. So we know A, B, and D can have a relationship with each other, right? They all seem to kind of go together. So the only one that's left that doesn't look like it's related to the rest is option C, absence of pulmonary secretions. So which of these is least likely to indicate this breathing technique? So we can go back to why we use this technique from the previous slide. So we know that it's used for people who have low oxygen in their blood, increased respiratory rate, atelectasis, anxiety, and excessive pulmonary secretions. So given all of the information and all of the reflecting that we did while we were trying to get to the correct answer of this question and remembering the word least, don't forget your key word like least, most, and accept. After doing all of this thinking, it's easy to overlook this word and get the, correct, the question incorrect. So the answer is absence of pulmonary secretion, secretions, option C, because as you can see above, the reasons we do use, use this technique is because 
we want to help people with excessive pulmonary secretions. In case you want to know where this information came from, here's the reference. It's from your Hillegas technique. And if you guys have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to our team at enrollment at nptefinalfrontier.com. And remember, you are powerful. You are strong. You are a Final Frontier warrior. And you will pass. Thank you.